Welcome back to the show. Shane Lehan is in studio and he has brought three cups of tea and loads of biscuits, Nora. Oh Alice in Wonderland, that's where I am now. Yeah, that's I feel like our child in the chocolate factory, one of those kind of tight yeah. moments we, we're having at the moment, Shane. That's, I'm obsessed with biscuits, okay? I've spent the last while <laughs> Obviously <you> are. <laughs> looking at biscuits. This is a deep part of the Irish psyche. Make no doubt about it. I was in France in the summer, mm -hmm. okay? And I went off down the biscuit aisle. I, I, I was lost. There was nothing there. There was nothing I could relate to. There was a few nice, you know, Breton biscuits yeah. and so on. But biscuits are like friends to us, right? <laughs> we, we have, you know, there's something nice. We have the cup of tea, but the cup of tea is no good without the something nice with yeah, it, you yeah, know? Yeah. And like biscuits are, are they, they feed into the deep psychology of Ireland. Little small treats on a wet day, you know, sit down there, look, we will be okay. Have a biscuit. Have a biscuit, you know? So biscuits to me are phenomenal. But the really interesting thing is that Ireland has its own real reputation for biscuits and has its own sort of um, beginnings of biscuits, if you like. Many of the biscuits you see here originated in Ireland. Wait, so, Shane. So we're talking about biscuits as such, the biscotti or the, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the original biscuits were twice baked, as it were. Mm. They go way, way back in okay. time, okay? But really it was only with the advent of sugar and the availability of sugar. Yeah. Uh, tax has been taken off, off sugar in about the 1870s or thereabouts that biscuits as we know them came into being. Yeah. And, and the Jacobs factory, for example, 1851, started down in Watford, moved up to, uh, up to Dublin and so on moved across into the UK. All of those manufacturing were, were, were started so really many paddles hard. we're looking at. So, so they were invented in Ireland. Absolutely. They are original Irish biscuits. Absolutely. No, we're, do you know what? No, we're kicking, we're, we're moving on. I have to we go to the in, 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 in a moment, okay? But look at it. Look at the factory. Look at them. We had, the numbers of biscuits that were being produced in Ireland and in the UK yeah. were absolutely colossal. But we'll, we'll start with the ordinary biscuits. Yeah, plain. The plain as, biscuits. As my body would say, yeah, plain, yeah. Yeah. Back in the day, Shane, when these came up first, who, who had these? For us? Were they rich people or did everybody have them? I think everyone had them. It was a new treat that was available, the new right. thing. And what was interesting is that the plain biscuits were designed. You'd know, of course, the rich tea. Mm -hmm. you'd oh, know, I love them. You'd know the Marietta, which yeah. is classic, of course. Mar Marietta named after, uh, I think, one of the, the Tsar of Russia's daughter, Mary, and her name it became synonymous with that particular yeah. biscuit. In Ireland, we call it Marietta then, okay, our own version of that. With butter. But with butter. <laughs> we love butter. Oh, I like the butter, yeah. We love yeah. We loved, we loved, look, I actually buttered this one earlier for you, Dottie. Thank look you. what, and what you, we used to butter them together. And squish and it out the <laughs> And the butter used to come through the little hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were fantastic. But these were all plain biscuits, yeah. you know. Are they Lincoln? The, they Lincoln? Lincoln, the oh, Lincoln nice cream. Lincoln. Again, when we used to eat these particular ones, we'd start off eating all the little dots all the way around and we'd go right into That's the That's because we had nothing else to do in our life. Well, it was kind of fun, you know. Yeah, yeah. If there was ever a design on a biscuit as well, yeah. some of the, the, the morning coffee, I think, had a design on it as well. Yeah. You know what, little yeah. teapots and yeah. things? And, like, and yeah. the, 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 malted, the malted milk had one of the little cow. We'd be trying to eat out the little cow. But Shane, were they actually to have for kind of when we have a Marietta and you have oh God, absolutely yeah. they were designed for donkeys so okay? into the tea so into I have the, the tea, tea here so now rich tea thanks to Molly for the tea it's okay and there's a so just like this there's an art to donkey, okay? okay? You see, you could you could start off donkey, you know, and if you didn't myself. get it right, you know, if it was you'd, it. you'd lose it, and you'd end up with a sludge at the end of the, and that well, was gross. taboo altogether. No, the Martin would get having to get the spoon to spoon it out. You could, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, or if you were very quick, that you could slurp it out fairly quickly. You know, that was the other other way. What was interesting about donkey as well is the digestive, which which is probably a classic of all the biscuits. Oh, okay, yeah. McVitie's in Edinburgh developed this <clears throat> a healthy biscuit in a way called the digestive because it had bicarbonate of soda and therefore it was meant to help your digestion and so on but in any case if you were dunking a digestive it regularly it, they've changed the size of it yeah. right it regularly wouldn't fit into the mug so there was a way of doing it and there was way you would, would eat one little part you could only put a tiny bit in first yeah. it was okay. an, an incredible oh. uh, dunking was a whole part of it yeah. and when did the change then from say the plain biscuits to everything else. When did that take off? When? Well, I suppose the next sort of thing that happened then is that people, we had the butter inside the Marietta. People started getting then what we call the sandwich biscuits, okay? Yeah. So the sandwich biscuits, the classic there would be the uh, custard, custard cream, mm. uh, in, in the, sometimes called the Kerry creams. Yeah. I love the line out of William Trevor's uh, short story, Pat O'Connor's The Ball of Maroon Vance, at half time, will we have a bottle of lemonade and a packet of Kerry creams? Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, it was pure luxury in the, time yeah, yeah, the yeah. period. But you would have all different fillings you know the and raspberry this, one's really nice the yeah the raspberry, raspberry one, yeah. ones are yeah we have those there too that i don't mm -hmm. worry what about fake 
rolls, Shane, because fig rolls, uh, where do, because we've got two different types of fig rolls, you as have, you can see here. One very Tell us about them. those. So listen, what you have is you have the, the, the fig roll. There was a, the huge tradition of the fig roll. First of all, we had two types, okay? This is the English fig roll, okay? And yeah. what happened with this one? It was baked first, okay? Hold on there and ask you yeah. we'll, we'll oh, pick it sorry, up. No. Okay. It was baked first and it was cut afterwards. And then but, the thing was, the fig was inserted. And no, it was baked in through the system that was there. But the Irish one was was actually um, uh, cut first and then baked afterwards. And the, if you like, so the, it was seared in. Oh, how would you get the fig into the fig roll? Well, oh, that was, that well, was the obsession. I'm well, have fig we, roll now. we had a magnificent yeah. campaign yeah. Uh, mm. uh, with a man called Jim Finnerty. And Jim Finnerty was supposedly the only man who knew the secret of how to get the Let's fig into the fig roll. Let's see Jim Finnerty. It was kind of mustache, but it was all kind of That's him, yeah. That's him there. And do you know what? There was there were people people actually believed that Jim Finnerty was a real person. Mm. And he went off to Figlandia where the figs <laughs> were and he had been kidnapped. And there was Was it the seventies? I remember yeah, all this. In, very in well. around that time, sixties, seventies yeah. and so on. Later on then you had that it moved on when Jim Finnerty went, you had Faker Baker. And Faker yeah, Baker was a was a guy and we had Figs who was the detective. Come here, Shane, we're gonna take a look at an ad nog and we saw this earlier on oh more, God, and it brought, brought us back. right back. Have a look at this. The Figs. Get the figs into the fig rolls anyway. You got 15 years ahead of you to uh, figure that one out. I feel like I'm 10 again. Seriously, I think it was amazing. Yeah, but it's it a great shows, ad. It shows Wasn't it? you how deep what mm. resonance biscuits mm. have, you know? What I love as well is that some of the biscuits here have incredible mm. stories. You mentioned earlier on that you liked the lemon puff, okay? Yeah. The lemon puff is actually comes from Sri Lanka. And it's a part of the, uh, if you like, the, the Raj, the great colonial exchange that came in. The lemon came from there. This was a biscuit that had a kind of a puff paste yeah. element to it. And then it was covered in a, in a glaze that was there as well. So each person, you know, when you go around the shops, you're looking for something different. You might say, oh, there's an old favourite. I'll go from the table, but I, I don't want one today. I'll have another one yeah. another day. I suppose the real interesting one for me was the trio of the uh, the Kimberly, Kimberly. McCann and, old, and coconut old, cream. There we go. Yeah. So when you love, we we'll love someone. Is is that that a, a bomb li bomb listen no. to this one for a moment. <laughs> no. The Kimberly. The Kimberly comes from, um, <laughs> it gets its name from South Africa, from the diamond mine. No, okay? of course Kimberly because, mines. Yeah. yeah, so the sugar, the little pieces of sugar oh. going around the age, they were the diamonds, okay? They, Never uh, knew that. And yeah. They, they so, were an Irish biscuit, Irish purely biscuit. made the whole lot. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Jacobs. They, uh, better known as the Spring Strong, that's what people type, like to call them as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. The other one here, the Macado biscuit. I have to say, I love Macado too. Oh, I love Macado. Delish. The Macado is a great treat altogether and so on. That came, for, I think, 18, uh, 18, 1888. No 1885 way. was uh, the Gilbert and Sullivan operetta with yeah, Japanese things were popular. So, as we call them, the Mikado. When were <laughs> the Mikado invented? <laughs> So 1888. They, they go back that long. They do, yeah. I don't think... I'd say most people watching I would not believe that. You and know that we can't. Where, where do they get the coconut though? The coconut came in from Ceylon, it came in from India, it came in from that. As I said, a big These part. were a touch yeah. and a taste of the Orient. Absolutely. And you know, they were bringing in arrowroot, they were bringing in co desiccated coconut, right. they were bringing in everything yeah. to try and add a different crunch, a different flavour, a different sweetness. Even back then. Even back then. Do you know the one I love, actually? And I've been asking everyone what's their favourite biscuit. The ginger nut. Oh, yeah, ginger nut, the ginger yeah. nut is, is a classic. Yeah. But again, the ginger nut has a whole array of stories about it. In here is ginger, there's a little bit of clove, mm -hmm. uh, there's a certain amount of cinnamon in there. It has either molasses or demerara sugar. And when it bakes, it creates this sort of cracking form. Yeah. form. You could take your tooth out with a ginger yeah. nut. And you know, when you, when you when you dunk them into tea, they can get very sticky. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But right I think that's part of the appeal. Yeah, that's yeah. part of the I don't know. That, well, that's, that's my that's part. part of your fillings. Uh, okay. <laughs> but you know what? The biscuits were long ago used to actually not come in packets at all. They were actually bought in the shop and they were bought loose, okay? And you've got a, a shot here of tens, so you'd put so them into these tens. Into, into I remember these, those tens in wrong. I don't in, remember those. Into those tins. And they were set at an angle with a little glass yeah. top on it. And you would go in and you would pick out your biscuits and they would be uh, sold by weight. You would yeah. weigh them in a brown paper bag. One of my students there, uh, Therese Harnett, she was telling me she remembers going into uh, her ad going in, buying the Kimberly Mikado and the coconut cream. 
they were expensive at the time. Yeah. They were the nicest thing you could bring to kids or you could bring to a yeah. house uh, with you at the time. You'd have them the time of the stations. Absolutely. Yeah. They were, they were, they were. But, but, but go back to the, the shop. There was a shop next to us at home down the road called Molly and the Yanks. That's what we called it anyway. Of course, because you back to work. And uh, I remember those boxes being inside. No, I don't remember them selling biscuits one by one, but the boxes were still there. So that, but the, the package then went into those boxes That's and right. opposed to the right. one. But I suppose keeping the biscuits then, they used to be what they called the biscuit bar before, mm -hmm. which was because it goes back to the old story of biscuits. That there were ship's biscuits and there were barrels of biscuits way, way back in there. Yeah. But what happened then is that people started to get the biscuit tins. The tin was really important. And of course, I love the biscuit tins and I've yeah. been going out. Uh, my great friend Mick Ford out in the farm in Granada gave me lots of these. Mm -hmm. My buddy up the road, Peter Roach, gave me this particular tin here, the afternoon tea mm -hmm. biscuits. And he just gave it to me like this. And I opened it up. And what did I find? But Peter's all his shoe polish <laughs> and all but you know what that's what I was saying earlier on the top shelf and thought if they were kind of multifunctional yeah. they afterwards the mom used to keep sewing and yeah. it, you were saying yeah. you've got screws and bits of things and bolts inside but they're in every house and, and, I'd say yeah. in every shed maybe yeah. at this stage the, 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 he will tell you he used to keep the love letters in them as well he like, told me that yeah. earlier on yeah. the, the, the only one rambling around but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was the nuts the bolts the six inch yeah. nails that yeah. were perfect for that yeah. Yeah. I think it's great but you know we actually because of all this we put a shout out actually on our Facebook page and we're looking for Ireland's old biscuit tin now we received hundreds of Lord fabulous Lord. pictures and lots of stories as well about what you have stored in those tents yeah it's a separate item we're going to call it uh, give up your old tins yeah give up your old tins give up your old tins. So look for Ireland's that. oldest uh Biscuit tin. Biscuit tin. And uh, please do send the picture and a good story behind the tin. We need the scale well. now. We need the scale as well. Shane, so thank you so much. Today, that I, for that. We didn't even get checked about the chalky beacons. We didn't. We just have to eat our way through we, them and we, we, can, we can go and look at those later on. No we problem. went, Shane, brilliant. Thank you. I didn't realise, especially how old they were in the history of them. Shane, great as always when you're into us. It's just amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think a biscuit says a lot. The biscuit you have, Shane, says a lot about you as a person. How do you have loads of different ones? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, you're multifaceted. They're complicated. Thank you, Shane. Now earlier on, we met our makeover 